दिलों में प्यार की खुशबू तो होठो पर दुआ रखना दिलों में प्यार की खुशबू तो होठो पर दुआ रखना ईमा में वक्त से एक रिश्ता इश्को वफा रखना ईमा में वक्त से एक रिश्ता Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh everyone and welcome back to Friday's Sermon for Kids where as you know we at MTA humble effort to bring you the wonderful guidance from beloved Hazur's Friday Sermon. Nobody here even thinks of doing this alone every single week helping me out our two amazing panelists. You already know them to my right is Ashir, to his right is Monis. Assalamualaikum to both of you guys and welcome back to the show. Wa alaikum as salam Rabbi Sahib. Alhamdulillah, jazakallah for being here guys. So dear audience, we came to learn brand new stories from Islam's history once more from beloved Hazur's Friday sermon and brand new names came to our knowledge. Momno ka khauf aur unki ghabrat bahut bad gayi thi aur dil dehshat aur bechaini se labrez the. Aise nazuk waqt mein Hazrat Abu Bakr radhi Allahu anhu haq mein waqt aur Hazrat Khatim ul Nabiyyin ke khalifa banaye gaye. منافقوں کافروں اور مرتدوں کے جن رویوں اور طور طریقوں کا آپ نے مشاہدہ کیا ان سے آپ ہم و غم میں ڈوب گئے آپ اس طرح روتے جیسے ساون کی جھڑی لگی ہو اور آپ کے آنسو چشمہ رواں کی طرح بہنے لگتے اور آپ رضی اللہ عنہ ہو اپنے اللہ سے اسلام اور مسلمانوں کی خیر کی دعا مانگتے so dear audience, there were some amazing stories this week about the bravery of the companions and those stories we're definitely going to be covering but as you already know, we always come to our panelists first, whom I have to ask. You guys seen this week's Friday sermon? Alhamdulillah, watched it once. Same here, saw it once. Alhamdulillah, and you already know what's going to come after that. Newly learned points, guys. The new thing I learned from beloved Hazrat Friday sermon was that Hazrat Umay Amara, Razi Allah Anha's son, Hazrat Habib, Razi Allah Anho, died from the order of Musaylima. This week, I learned that alongside his men, Hazrat Umay Amara, Razi Allah Anha, also fought in the battle of Yamama. Brilliant points, guys, and we're actually going to be coming back to this amazing story. I actually learned new things from it this week as well, but. Not before we hear all of your newly learned points, dear audience. For that, we go straight to Kids Take. In this Friday sermon, Hazur presented quotes of the Promised Messiah Al Islam and Hazrat Mizar Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmad Razi Anhu, explaining the factors that led to the Battle of Yamama, including the false claimants to prophethood and the Arahid, who not only became apostates but openly waged war against Muslims. Beloved Hazur told us about Umay Amara. She was the bravest Muslim woman. She took part on in battle of Yamama and in battle of Uhud. From this part of the sermon, I learned that His Holiness Ayatollah Tala bin Aziz said that Hazrat Abu Akil Anhu was the first to set out for battle during the battle of Yamama. One thing that I learned was that Hazrat Ume Amara was one of the most bravest Muslim women. He participated in the Battle of Uhud and in the Battle of Yamama. She also would cast arrows at anyone who tried to approach the Holy Prophet Jazakumullah Ahsan al Jaza, dear Kids Take presenters, we love hearing all of your takes. If you haven't sent a video in, this is for you. Send in your video, we love seeing it. Now, let's get to our discussion. First off, Murambi Sahib, I have to say, some of those stories that Hazur mentioned in the Qutbah this week really showed new companions, some of whose name we never even heard of before. Yeah, I think it makes sense to start off with some of those stories. What about the one where the companion had seen a special dream? Oh, that was a very, very nice story, and it's a very nice story to start off with as well. Hazur mentioned that this companion was named Hazrat Ibad bin Bishr, Anhu. 
when the Muslims fought and defeated Tulaha, you know, one of the other false claimants to prophethood, Hazrat Ibad bin Bishr had a dream. In that dream, he ended up telling another companion that I had a dream where I saw the heavens, the sky opened up in front of me, and then it closed again right in front of me. And Hazrat Ibad said that from that dream, I've realized that in the next battle that we fight, I am going to receive martyrdom from Allah. And as a matter of fact, that companion he had told this to ended up being part in the battle of Yamama with Hazrat Ibad bin Bishr. And he says that in that very battle, I ended up seeing Hazrat Ibad bin Bishr being martyred and he passed away on the battlefield. But this story shows how Allah truly loved the companions and had already revealed to some of them that they would be coming to him and they would be given the rank of martyrdom and they knew what to give their life for and they gave their life for it. That was such a wonderful story to start off with because it shows everything the pious companions did was for the pleasure of Allah. But I'm pretty sure that we have lots of more stories to go through, right? Can we talk about the one where Hazrat Umar Amara, Rizala Tala Anha, avenged her son's death against Musalma? That was such a powerful story. And what a brave woman she was. A brave woman she absolutely was. I actually learned this story for one of the first times as well, to be honest. And uh, I was impressed. Number one, you have to know about the background of the story. And you guys mentioned this, right? That the son of Hazrat Umm Amara Razilahu Anha was Hazrat Habib. And he was traveling, he was caught by Musalma's army. And Musalma ended up killing Hazrat Habib in a horrible way. And Hazrat Umm Amara Razilahu Anha, when she found out about her son's death, she made a promise that she would devote her whole life to making sure that this enemy of Allah Musalma is given his punishment in that he is finished in this world. All of his mission is destroyed. And so she ended up taking her other son, Hazrat Abdullah, and Hazur mentioned how she was so brave, she ended up leading basically to an extent the actual effort against Musalma and reached in the garden where they were actually taking refuge towards the end of the battle, got next to Musalma and took a direct part in making sure that Musalma was killed. She fought so bravely that in the middle of the fight, her hand was even cut, but she made sure to complete the mission of making sure that Musalama is killed in that war. And that is exactly what happened. Her son Hazrat Abdullah took part in that battle as well, and both of them made sure Musalama was killed. And so their mission was accomplished. Honestly, that shows how wrong those people were to think that women can't be brave enough and fight to defend the religion especially the companions of the Holy Prophet Wasallam. Yeah, she really proved such people wrong with her heroic actions that have now been recorded in history for everyone to know. But I know we have more stories with new names. Yeah, what about the one companion who got an injury by an arrow? That was amazing as well. Oh, that was an incredible story and I actually learned about that story for the first time as well. Hazur mentioned that there was a companion named Hazrat Abu Aqil Raziallahu Anhu. And Hazrat Abu Aqil got a very bad injury on his shoulder. And the arrow ended up coming through his shoulder. And some narrations say it ended up going so deep that it came very close to the heart as well. But that companion was so brave and strong about this that because that actual arrow was stuck inside and was bothering him, he couldn't fight properly with it anymore. He decided to just pull it out so he could actually start moving his arm a little bit. He pulled that arrow out and continued fighting. Other companions came to him and told him, Abu Aqil, you have to stop. You've injured yourself a lot. You need to rest and you've become very weak from this injury. But he said, no, I'm going to continue fighting for this cause because that's why we've come here. He continued fighting and he kept going until Musalma's army was restricted to the garden. Now he became so injured, he was lying on the floor at that point. And Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar says, that he was looking for Abu Aqil in the field with other dead bodies. And he said out loud, where's Abu Aqil? where's Abu Aqil?" And Hazrat Abu Aqil called him, called him out basically and told him, this is where I am, right? He could hardly speak at that time. He asked Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar, what has happened? What was the outcome of the battle? And Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar told him, I bring good news to you. The enemy of Allah has been killed. And at that point, 
Hazrat Abu Akil raised that arm of his with a single finger pointing towards the heaven. And the only words that could come out of his mouth at that time were, Alhamdulillah, that is all praise belong to Allah. And those were his final words. And he passed away in the battlefield after that. SubhanAllah, what an example to lead by. And what beautiful last words. But I know we're missing a story right now, right? Yeah, I know. There was this one story Huzur, may Allah be his helper, gave in details about the enemy leader trying to trick Hazrat Khalid bin Walid, Rajala Ta'ala Anho. I know! We should definitely talk about those stories. Oh, we'll learn about that story, all right. But before that, you're going to have to learn a new word. That new word is Ahd. I knew you would come to this part of the show. I absolutely will not be telling you that. You're correct on that. But that's exactly why we're going to have our loyal presenter tell us. Shiraz, take it away with the word of the sermon. Jazakallah, Marabi Sahib. So, the word ahd is simple, but is very important. It's originally Arabic, and in its original language, it's pronounced ahd. In Urdu, it's pronounced ahd. The most basic and clear translation of the word in English is pledge or promise. In Islam, doing an ahd is a very, very big deal. It can be made with anyone, Muslim or non-Muslim, but Islam teaches us that when we make a pledge, it should always be about something good and that Allah is watching. Like in the Tifl pledge, we promise to never hurt anyone or lie. So this is about serious matters. They're not throwaway lines. And a true Muslim never lies when making a solemn pledge. A story occurred with Hazar Khalid bin Walid regarding a pledge he made. Even though he never lied, the other person was not honest. That is the story you'll learn about next. Back to you guys. Jazakumullah, Ahsan al Jazaa Shiraz, you're absolutely right. An ahad is a very serious matter. That's something we completely understand, Rabbi Sahib. And you already know what we want to hear now. I can tell by your very faces what kind of story you guys want to hear right now. So. The background of that story is, right after Musalama was killed, one of his henchmen who was still alive, his name was Maja'a, he decided to come up with a trick and he wanted to trick Hazrat Khalid bin Walid to make the most out of this opportunity that he now had. He saw that the Muslims were very, very injured. And Hazrat Khalid bin Walid who knew Musalama has been killed, who was the real problem in all of this war. And he did not want to get any more Muslims injured. So Maja'a said that, O oh Khalid bin Walid, we still have way more soldiers that you still have to go through if you really want to say that you're a conqueror and you've you know, destroyed the Banu Hanifa. And Hazrat Khalid bin Walid wondered, he said that, you know, he does not want any more Muslims killed. Musalma has been killed. So what to do now? But see, there weren't any more soldiers. The Banu Hanifa had basically no soldiers left. They were either prisoners to Muslims or they were dead. The only people left were women and children. So what Maja'a did, he went to the extra fortresses in the back. He told all the women to wear armors all over their bodies so it doesn't look like they're women and come at the top of their fort on the walls and show spears and everything, act like they're the soldiers. Hazrat Khalid bin Walid saw that and he said, you know what, I don't want to proceed with any more war. Musalama has been killed, our mission here is accomplished. I don't want more Muslims to die for this, right? Let's do a truce. And he made a pledge. He said, we'll only take a small bit of the treasure that you're supposed to give us and we'll let you go free after that, right? And that's exactly what he did. He made that pledge and did not do any more fighting. But as soon as he went inside the forts, he found out that it was just women and children. There's nobody, no other soldier left. So Zid Khalid bin really looked at Maja'a and said, you have lied to me. What kind of a person are you, right, who lies about the pledges? But he said that I did this for my nation, right? The punishment Hazrat Abu Bakr wanted to give these people was very, very harsh. But because Hazrat Khalid bin Walid had made a pledge, Hazrat Khalid bin Walid said, I'm not going to take any more of your wealth. I'm not going to harm any more of your people because I have made this pledge now. And a Muslim has to follow through with this pledge. And this is the same thing he told Hazrat Abu Bakr. And Hazrat Abu Bakr was extremely happy that Hazrat Khalid bin Walid decided to fulfill his pledge. MashaAllah, our Islam has very powerful examples of honesty. 
It always amazes me. Yeah, I mean, if Hazrat Khalid really wanted to, he could have taken all of their treasure and money, but he kept to his promise. Absolutely, and on top of that, Muslims had suffered great injuries and losses as well, right? Yes, they had suffered a lot of injuries in this battle. As a matter of fact, what the degree of those injuries was is exactly what we're going to find out next in our amazing segment. For that, we go straight to the question of the sermon. All right, everyone, time once more for the question of the sermon, where, as you already know, you sitting at home, as well as our two panelists, will have 10 seconds to get the right answer to a weekly question. Question this week is, what particular group of Muslims suffered great loss of life in the battle of Yamama? Group number one, the Ansar. Group number two, the Muhajireen. Group number three, the elderly Muslims. Group number four, the huffaz e quran Your time starts now. Time's up. All right, Ashir, what do you have? I think it's number one, the Ansar. Unis? I think it's number three, the elderly Muslims. And the right answer is number four, huffaz e quran Oh, man. Well, mashallah, good try, guys. And it's true, a lot of those factions did suffer losses. But the particular group that Hazur mentioned that suffered a lot of loss were the huffaz e quran the people that have memorized the whole holy Qur'an. And some narrations say that over 700 huffaz e quran were martyred in the Battle of Yamama. They passed away. And a lot of work had to be done to teach the Qur'an to more people, so they memorize it as well. And the Muslims in total, according to some narrations, say that they lost almost 1,700 companions. 1,700 companions were killed. But the destruction and the loss of life on the rebel side was far, far worse. According to some narrations, they almost had 21,000 rebels that were killed in this battle. So at the end, which was the final goal, they faced defeat and the Muslims were victorious. Alhamdulillah, but Murabi Sahib, this is such a big event. What was the ultimate lesson that we should learn from this? Well, Monas Hazur mentioned that there was one very important lesson that should be learned from the defeat of Musalma and the victory of Muslims in this. That is that Allah came to the help of his true Khalifa, Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu, and he established true Khilafat in Arabia after the passing away of the Holy Prophet And Hazur actually mentioned this again. These are the words of Hazrat Aisha anha, who is the daughter of Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu. And those words were that at the time when the Prophet وسلم, passed away, there was so much disorder, so much war happening that people became extremely scared. But Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu, had been given patience like the messengers. And it was through Hazrat Abu Bakr's patience and wisdom and dedication to preserving the teachings of Islam that the Muslims were ultimately given victory and that Allah always helps true Khilafat and establishes it in the earth. And like all episodes, I think it's a pretty good time to remind our audience, right? I absolutely think it's the right time, Ashir, so take it away with that message. Got you, Murabi Sahib. So everyone, listen up. Watch the Four Fighter Sermon. And don't forget, we love seeing your videos. And it just takes a few minutes to make one. So remember to send your videos. And for that, watch the next critical message. Did you enjoy this week's Friday Sermon for Kids? Want to know how you can make it even better? Tell us what you learned from Beloved Hazur's Friday Sermon and send your videos at fs kids at mta.tv no later than every Sunday and we'll try our best to include them in our next show. Now, we can't include all the videos you'll send every time, but you can see them all on our Instagram and Twitter at MTA Canada. Remember, at Friday Sermon for Kids, you're not just the audience, you make the show. See you next week. All right, everybody, we're back to the review. The stories this week were completely new, so make sure to pay attention. 
Hazuri Adalahutala began the sermon by narrating stories of bravery from many Muslims who fought and were martyred in the battle against Musaylima. There was Hazrat Ibad bin Bishr anhu, whom Allah told him in a dream he would be martyred. Then was Hazrat Ume Amara anha, an extremely brave and incredible lady companion of the Holy Prophet وسلم, and fought Musaylima so bravely she even lost her hand in the battle and Hazrat Abu Hakil anhu, who also lost his life but survived just long enough to hear the good news that Musaylima has been defeated. But although Musaylima was dead, one of his henchmen named Maja'a tricked Hazrat Khalid bin Walid anhu, with false words to sign a truce and pledge he wouldn't attack any more or take money from them because they had still had way more fighters. Khalid bin Walid anhu, did not want any more Muslims killed but Hazrat Khalid bin Walid anhu, found out this was completely false and no fighters were left except women and children. But still, because a pledge was already made with Maja'a, Hazrat Khalid bin Walid did not attack or take any more treasure. This brought a full end to this battle. The Battle of Yamama was especially brutal against Muslims. Over 700 Hufas companions, these are people who memorized the complete Holy Quran, were killed, were martyred in this battle, and almost 1,700 companions were martyred in total. The rebels faced far worse, and according to some narrations, almost 21,000 were killed. But Hazur mentioned how the real point to remember in this hard-earned victory was that Allah helped his true Khalifa, Hazrat Abu Bakr and he made sure the time of fear during Hazrat Abu Bakr's time was turned into a time of peace. And don't forget to watch the full Friday sermon of beloved Hazur. Until next week!